from Millville, New Jersey, and reaching around the world. New Life World Outreach Ministries presents His Word of Power with Pastor Richard F. Myers. Join us in a time of joyful worship, anointed ministry, and dynamic preaching from one of our Sunday morning worship services. It happens here on His Word of Power.
and Lord, we just worship you. Come on, let's just lift up our hands. Jesus, we welcome you into this place. season of outpouring of your presence. This is a season of outpouring of your presence, God. Our hearts are hungry, Lord. Our hearts are thirsty, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit like you promised, like you promised. Oh. Our desire, God, send out your presence, pour out your spirit. Yeah, we worship you, we worship you. Oh, we worship you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We worship you. Come on, just a little bit longer. Let's just lift him up. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Come on, let your voice go up. This is a church of Jesus Christ, and we lift up his name. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, oh Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, oh God. Coffee. Ah, the smell of fresh roasted coffee beans. The aroma, the taste, and the warmth of a fresh hot cup of coffee. It gets the day going. It's a daily ritual for many people. Imagine how much more a fresh taste of God in the morning would get your day off to a great start. Come visit us. We'll tell you how. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. the United States of America. It was built on the pioneers of freedom. We fought our battles and won our war. It's been a long journey to gain the freedoms we enjoy. And this year, we celebrate that journey. Join us as we celebrate the freedoms of our God and our country. 
It happens, July 3rd, at 11 a.m., at New Life Church. It's been a long time since I've been up here. Well, it was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer felt it was hardly worth his while to waste much time on this old violin he held it up with a smile sure ain't much but it's all we got left guess we ought to sell it too now who'll start to bid on this old violin just one more and we'll be through one give me one dollar we'll make it two only two dollars we'll make it three Three dollars twice, no, that's a good price. Who's got a bid for me? Now raise up your hand and don't wait any longer. This auction's about to end. Who's got four, just one dollar more? Bid on the soul violin. Now the air was hot as the people stood round. Sun was setting low. From the back of the crowd, a gray haired man came forward and picked up the bow. He wiped the dust from the old violin. He tightened up the strings. And then he played out a melody pure and sweet, sweet as the angels sing. Then the music stopped, and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, what am I bid for this old violin? And he held it up with a bow. Then he cried out, one, give me 1,000, who'll make it two? Only 2,000? We'll make it three, 3,000 twice. Now that's a good price. Who's got a bid for me? The people called out what made the change. We don't understand. The auctioneer stopped and he said with a smile, it was the touch of the master's hand. You know, many a man with his life out of tune is battered and scarred with his sin. He's auctioned cheap to a thankless world, much like the old violin. And that foolish crowd, they don't understand. Master comes. The worth of the soul and the change that's brought just by the touch of the master's hand. And he cries out, one give me one thousand, who'll make it two? Only two thousand, who'll make it three? Three thousand twice, now that's a good price. Who's got a bid for me? The people called out, but made the change. We don't understand. The auctioneer stopped and he said with a smile, it was the touch of the master's hand. It was the touch of the master's hand. It was the touch of the master's hand. Let's get our Bibles open this morning to 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Can we bring that down a little bit, please? That's really hot. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
And also, can we take it out of the monitors too, please? It's getting a hollow sound. Thank you. Praise God. You know, it's an amazing time when you come to New Life Church. Amen? And it's not because of my great preaching, although that helps. I, no, that was your time to say amen. amen. Frank, I needed your help there. You let me down, brother. It's because the anointing of God is here and he always meets us where we are and at the place of our need. Amen? Amen. And when you come to church, you never know what's going to happen and what God's going to do. Amen? Amen? Like you could come sit here in the church and just believing and just enjoying the presence of God. And then all of a sudden, the pastor says, Sarah, come up here. <coughs> yeah. Come on. As she walks with great fear and trembling. You know what happened today? God picked you out and laid you on somebody's heart. Really? Yep, really. And because he did, they were obedient to do what God said to do. So I have here an envelope with $100 for you. And it's totally yours. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. If you're visiting with us for the first time, let me explain what just happened. No, we don't pay people to come to church. If we did, the house would be full. But what has happened is God moved on someone's heart to bless Sarah today. It was done anonymously. No one will know who did it. It will be between that individual and God, and it will be a blessing for Sarah there will be no tax deductible receipts or anything. It was given totally out of the pure love that God has for his children. And one of his children were obedient to be the vessel of that love. Amen? Amen. So whenever you come to church, you never know what God might do. Amen? Amen. Let's get to the word of God this morning. We are looking here at 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and we're going to read just one verse. And could you bring that down a little bit more, please? It's a little bit hot yet. Thank you. In the 15th verse of 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, we read these words. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Let me read that again. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, Lord, that as we study your word, you will bring to us revelation. You will bring to us an understanding. You will bring to us an open heart that we might receive and hear what the Spirit of God says. And so I thank you today, Lord. I thank you for everything that you have for us in the mighty name of Jesus. And all of God's people said... Amen. Today, I want to share with you more than teach you, although hopefully you'll learn something. I want to do more than preach to you today, and hopefully it will stir you. But what I really want to do today is talk to you about something that is of great depth and great intimacy with the Father. And what I want to share with you today is coming from my heart. And so I want to talk to you about what God is saying to us in this passage of Scripture. He says, though you have 10,000 instructors, and we know that he gave us the fivefold ministry, the prophet, the pastor, the apostle, the teacher, the evangelist, to build us up, edify the body of Christ until we all come to the unity of the faith. And so they have assignments. And when he talks to us there and he says, though you have 10,000 instructors, he says that I have provided you with everything that you need to become victorious. 
I've given you everything that you need that you can walk in obedience. I've given you everything that you need and the instructors to present this to you so that you have the choice of becoming what I want you to be. But above all of those things of which I have given to you in the fivefold ministry as instructors, I have something that's even more important to me, and that is the spiritual fathers that I have put in place in my kingdom that will be a spiritual representative of who I am, the Father God, to you, my children, to me, his children. And so today, what I want to tell you about is talk to you about is the spiritual fathers, not the, not the apostles, not the bishops, not the titles of all that stuff, but the one who has the true reflection of God and God's attributes. It's the one who is not in it to build his own name. It's the one that doesn't have any alternative purposes. He doesn't want to fill his own desires. He doesn't want to fill his own lust. He doesn't want to build his own kingdom. But he wants to be the reflection for God's people and God's children so that they know that whatever their experience has been with an earthly father, the reflection of the spiritual father of the heavenly father will supersede whether you had a good, bad, or indifferent experience with your own father. And so today I want to define for you a little bit what it's like to become a spiritual father and what God is talking about in this particular area. See, what happens when someone commits to God and says, Father, I want your heart, I want your mind, I want to operate under your principles and your thoughts. And so, Father, let me be a reflection to you or for you to your children so that they may get just a small glimpse of what you are like, Father. And so what happens in that case, he becomes that man or woman, oh, actually not a woman, but a man who has committed to become a spiritual father. He becomes the example of God's fatherhood to his children. And, and he doesn't base any of his actions or any of his decisions or any other thing about himself, his character or nature, or nature uh, about anything based on what he experienced as a father who had an earthly father and who can look back and see the example of an earthly father. I had a great father. I had a great earthly father. He always showed his love through the things he did, never vocalizing it. I can remember the first time I heard him say, I love you. It was in a hospital bed as he had gotten septus in the hospital. Weren't sure whether he was going to make it. And as I was walking out the door after I prayed for him, I heard these words. I love you, bub. In 45 years, that was the first time I heard that. But I knew that he loved me. I knew that he loved me because he showed it in actions. And though it took 45 years for him to say the words, he demonstrated the words. And I always knew throughout my young years that my dad loved me and my dad gave me the work ethic that I have and, uh, and the character and the honesty and the integrity. I know all that, but you know what? That has no bearing on being a spiritual father. Therefore, even if I had had a bad experience with my father and my dad, like some of you may have had, even though I've had that, the good news is it's not based on that either. That is totally wiped out, and a new example of a father is established in the heart of those who are willing to go to that step. Because in that step, it requires much, much more than just answering a calling or just saying, yes, I will be a pastor. Yes, I'll be an apostle. Yes, I'll go out into the world and be an evangelist. And I want you to understand something. Shame on those that are calling themselves these kind of titles and they're not producing the fruits. That is not an acceptable thing with God the Father. God is the one who calls us and names us. We don't do that to each other. Somebody say amen. 
And the, I'll be honest with you. As soon as somebody comes and introduces themselves and says, hi, I'm Apostle Jones, I'm Bishop Jones, I just ignore them. That title doesn't mean anything. Show me the fruits. You know, instead of show me the money for Christians, show me the fruit. Show me the fruit that you're an apostle, that you're a pastor, that you're a teacher. Show me the fruit because that's the measurement that God has set up for us today. He says, show me the fruit because we will know you by your fruit. Can you be, can you just say amen to that? Amen. And so to become a spiritual father, not a pastor, not an apostle, prophet, or any of the fivefold ministry, to become a spiritual father in the name of the father, you have to develop this intimacy that goes well beyond knowledge, understanding, and revelation. You have to go by, past that stuff that you learn when you're studying, that when God also all of a sudden reveals the scripture to you, it goes beyond this realm where you say, God, I understand this and I know this and blah, 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 and I've studied and I've done all this and I've paid the price. It doesn't really bring you into that place of intimacy with God. Helen and I have been married 55 years, right? In, in December. See, I remember these things. <laughs> you know what? When we first got married, I didn't know her like I know her today. You know why? Because it took that long to develop the intimacy between us from heart to heart and head to head and body to body and mind to mind and everything else that develops this intimacy where we almost can read each other's statements and sayings and how we will complete certain situations. We've learned that because that's the development of intimacy. And to become a spiritual father you can't do that through learning or experience, but only that intimacy with the Father. And when we learn that, we begin to put everything else aside of building big churches, of having multiple ministries, of having people all over the place doing all kinds of stuff. We put that all aside and we concentrate on exactly what we were singing about this morning. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Is God asking you to do that? Probably not. He's not asking you to come to that level, perhaps, because the depth of a spiritual father is only determined by the depth of his intimacy with the father. See, you got to be around the Father enough times and you got to learn his ways and you got to understand how he thinks and what he does and why he does it and how he loves us in such measure that you become the spiritual father. And you don't name yourself that. He names you that. I can remember when I began that journey and I began asking God, God, I want to be more than a pastor. I didn't know anything about this spiritual father stuff. I just knew that I wanted more. I wanted to be able to take somebody that he has put under my care. I wanted to be able to know that this man and this woman have been implanted into my heart. And it's not just something on a numbers roll or a name roll, but I care about him and I care about her to the depths that it affects my heart when their hearts are hurting. It affects my heart when they're rejoicing and they're being blessed by God. And I can remember when that journey began. It began right there on the floor. It was one Sunday night. I was laying there on the floor and I was crying out to God in one of our evening worship services and I was crying out to God and I said, God, 
Give me more of you. I want to know more of you. I want to know. I want to know how you think. I want to know how you love, not how I love in the carnal realm. And I love my wife with everything that I got, but I want God's kind of love to be able to flow for me. And I remember laying here on the floor that night and God spoke to me that night. He said, I'll give it to you. I said, wow. You'll give it to me? He said, yes, I'll give it to you. I'll bring you into an intimacy with me that most people never experience, and I'll show you things, and I'll reveal things to you like most people never, ever see, but are you willing to pay the price? How many know there's always a price? How many know that the higher you go with God, the narrower the road gets? How many know that when you are earnestly seeking God, the devil's not going to lay back and say, oh, well, he's going to be this with God. You're going to fight battles to get there. I remember laying on the floor right there. And I said to God, after he said to me, I'll do that. I'll not only do that, I'll have signs and wonders following you. People will be healed and delivered and set free and your ministry will expand like you've never dreamed of before if you're willing to pay the price. I said, okay, what's the price? How many like to know how much something is before you buy it? Amen? Amen. How many know that we don't go into the store and look around and say, oh, that looks like a nice Cadillac. I'll take it. How many know we always go in and look at the sticker price? Amen. We go in and we see, how much is this thing going to cost me? So I said to God, laying right there on the floor, how much? God? What's the price? And this was his response. I'll tell you after you tell me whether you'll pay the price or not. What? Get behind me, Satan. What are you talking about, Lord? I'm supposed to say yes or no without knowing what the price is? He said, that's the deal. He said, if you want this intimacy, he said, you have to agree to my price. And after you agree, I'll tell you the price. It's kind of like a car salesman. You go in to buy a car and you see the price. And by the time you're done, you don't know what you've paid. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I know the last time we went in to get a car for Helen, I, we're in there and we're talking and everything else and here's the price and until we're right there in the very last minute when the manager comes in, he going to make the deal for you. How many have ever gone through any of that? You know what I'm talking about, right? So I'm waiting for the Holy Ghost to come in and make the deal with me there on the floor. I want you to know that was not an easy decision. I want you to know that it was the depths of my being that had to make that decision, knowing that I wanted more of God but didn't know the price that I would have to pay for it. So after some wrestling and that service lasted about an hour and a half, I guess that night, and I would say that a good hour we wrestled together. I felt like the man of God who wrestled with the man, the angel of God, until he touched his hip. Thank God he didn't touch my hip. That's all I can tell you. Well, actually, he did for three years. I walked in pain for you. Yeah. So I finally said to God, okay, I'll pay the price. It's a deal. Now, I want you to know something. That was probably one of the hardest decisions I ever made with God. I'm not this superhero that can just say, yes, God, I will pay the price. I, I'm not a Peter. I don't want to get accused of denying Christ after saying, oh, I'll go with you all the way even to death. I'll also tell you that once I said yes, I was frightened to what the price was. So I said, okay, God, we got a deal. What's the price? 
He said, I will draw you closer than you've ever been with anything or anybody else in your entire life. I will reveal truths to you that no other people who have maintained at a lower level will ever expect to hear. Here's the price. You will lose your name. Your name will no longer be associated with anything that I do through you. So the moment you lay hands on someone and they receive an instant miracle, they won't remember you. They'll remember me. Now that sounds wonderful. That sounds tremendous. But I want you to get the significance of what that means. Close your eyes with me. Get the bats ready. When I tell you in point, you hit the people I tell you. Okay? <laughs> Just close your eyes a minute. I'm going to say a name. John Parker. Immediately when I said John Parker, the picture in your mind focused on this John Parker. You immediately thought he was a white man. He had red blood. You didn't think of that. You thought of the bald-headed old black man who sits up here and prophesies. You had a picture of him because I spoke his name to you. Amen. See, our identities are in our names. Who we are are in our names. Let me tell you something. If you're a liar, if I say your name to somebody who knows you, the thought that they will have is, oh yeah, he's that liar. If you're a man or a woman of God and you demonstrate that, you know what will happen? When somebody says your name, they'll say, oh, yeah, man, that's a woman or a man of God. Because our name identifies who we are, what we are, how we act, and how we talk, and it puts a mental picture into other people's lives. So my identity and your identity is locked up in your name. And imagine if God said... Your name doesn't matter anymore. Your identity is gone. And they will only remember what I did for them. That was probably 15, 20 years ago laying there on that floor. And I want you to know I have never, ever regretted making that decision for him. Because my name means nothing, but his name means everything. And when we begin to realize that as children of the Most High God, we suddenly lose this thing that drives us to be something, that drives us to have our name out there, that drives us to have our identity, our reputations, and everything else. It doesn't matter anymore because of the intimacy that has created in you with the Father God has taken you to a new level. And when you get to that level, you'll never ever build your ministry on the backs of other believers because now the perspective that you have as a spiritual father takes on a whole new realm. You no longer see you as a congregational member. You no longer see you as somebody who attends church here, New Life on Sunday. You begin to see you for who you are and the validation of what you're going through and the life that you live and you become part of my heart and the heart of God and together we share times of intercession, times of praise for you 
times of concern, times for joy of you. And it becomes a never-ending connection with the Father God. And it has one purpose. And that one purpose is to bring you to a higher realm with God so that you can walk in the goodness of what God has for you. Somebody say amen. And I'm going to tell you it's so much harder to be a father than a preacher because that name father has been so destroyed and that context of a father has been placed in cults and been placed in uh, terrible. (coughs) But the joy and the intimacy on the inside brings you to a place where you are elevated into this thing that God puts inside of you for the love of God for his people. You know what? I want you to see it. So would you turn over with me in your Bibles to Hebrews, the 13th chapter. I want you to see what this is that I am talking about. Here in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, I'll wait till you get there. It simply defines what a father. It also talks about the pastors and the apostles and the, and the prophets and everybody else. But it also says the key and crux of what the assignment of them all are. In Hebrews, the 13th chapter, we want to begin reading there at the 15th verse. Hebrews, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your soul as they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. See, every one of us will stand before God one day. And every one of us will be judged by the Father. And we know that we will get into heaven because we've accepted Christ. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. We have served him. We have walked with him. But there, when we stand before the judgment seat, according to the word of God, here is a lineup of people that we wonder what they're there for. There's one, two, three, four for some of us, 10 for others of us, two for others of us. We think to ourselves as each name is called and they come forward, two comes up for this one, none comes up for that one, 10 comes up for this one. And according to the word of God, this is not what I make up, this is what God's word says. According to the word of God, it'll be the pastors, it'll be the fathers, it'll be those who had authority over you, who were watching out for your soul. It will be those who stood and became a spiritual input into your life, oversaw your life, loved you for who you are, helped you to bring you to the point where you can offer the sacrifice of praise. And it says there that they will be held accountable for presenting to the Father God an account of who you were and what you did. And as they do that, it will directly affect the rewards that you will receive in heaven. Yeah, you'll get to heaven. But if they give an unprofitable report, oh yeah, they were in my church for two weeks. Then they went out and they lived back like they used to be. See, what most believers don't realize And sad to say, many pastors, apostles and prophets and bishops and everything else don't realize how serious God takes it for us to watch out for your soul. And the Bible says very clearly there, we will give an account and may they do it. Look at this. May they give that account with joy and not with grief because it will be unprofitable to you. Wow, when I began to think about that, when God began to reveal that, I sat down and I thought about all the pastors 
that Hillary and I have been under. And then on that judgment day, they're going to be lined up or however God does it, I don't know. Maybe they recorded it in his book. I, I have no idea. But they're going to give a report as to me and, of course, to Helen. And as I began to look back to all the different pastors that we sat under, and there wasn't a lot of them for us. There's maybe five or six, I guess, for our whole life together anyway, right? I began to look back on some of the pastors that were going to stand before God on that day when I do and give an account of me. And I began to think how many of them are still alive and how many of them have gone before me. And I began to ask myself, I wonder which one of those pastors would take a bribe. How much could I pay them for a good report? Do you really think I thought that? Of course not. But you're tempted. You're tempted to influence them because they'll be given the report. Will you wind up in heaven? Of course. As long as you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that you've accepted him and asked him to forgive you of your sins, you will wind up in heaven. But your rewards will be directly affected by the works that you do and the reports that he, your pastors, give. And you can tell whether or not the report's going to be good. It's really simple. There's some simple guidelines quickly, and I don't have much more time, but there's some simple guidelines that can help you. I want to give you one today. I want to tell you whether or not you have a pastor or a father or a bishop or an apostle, whatever their title is. I want to tell you one of the greatest signs that you can know whether or not you have a spiritual covering. I will make that one key thing available in a special tape that I have for you for $10. And if you order today, there's free shipping on it and we'll give you two for just the price of an additional shipping charge. Here's a simple way to know whether you have a pastor or spiritual father. When it's time to make a life-changing decision. When it's time to make a decision that will alter or change the course of your life in some direction, way, or form. Do you ask your pastor to pray and be in agreement with you? Or do you tell him what your decision is? If you go and say, Pastor, Father, whatever it's called, I'm getting this stirring in my life. Would you pray and see if it's God? Would you pray and get yourself in agreement with me so that I can know for sure that I have two witnesses because in the mouth of two witnesses every truth is established? Or do you just do it and tell me? I can't tell you the number of people I've had come in my office and say, Pastor, we're leaving. Pastor, we're doing this. Pastor, we're going to go do that. And not once did they say, you know, God seems to be stirring. And there, there has been people that have done that also. Pastor, there seems to be a stirring in me. Could you agree with me? Could you see what God is saying so that I'm in agreement and I don't get hoodwinked by the enemy? And if you are in that camp where you say, Pastor, plus along with your other spiritual counselors and everything, would you agree with me and see what God is saying? Then you have a pastor who you've submitted to and is watching out for your soul. There's a lot more. We'll cover those in the next session. But I want to leave you with this. As a spiritual father, I'm to reflect to you the heart of God. To cause you to give praise and worship, honor and glory unto the Father. 
I'm here to give you all the wisdom, the counsel, the understanding that I have regarding the word of God and his nature and his character. It's like a buffet table. It's been set. There's all kinds of choices. You're the one that will decide what you'll partake of. Bow your heads with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us. Thank you, God, for the promises you fulfill. Thank you, God, for the guidance that you give to us. Thank you for those that you have put into place to help cover us, shelter us, help us, account for us. I thank you, Lord, that today that we've heard from not my heart, but your heart, Father. We've heard that the fullness and the depth is based on the depth of intimacy with you. Father, let us grab hold of the truth today that we've experienced in the house. Let us understand that this place being a place of safety and security is not just about <laughs> a title but it's about a heart. So I pray right now, Father, that that heart, that heart is transmitted to the hearts of your children. And I give you glory for that in Jesus' name. Your heads are still bowed, your eyes are still closed. Maybe there's somebody here this morning. Maybe there's somebody here this morning that you haven't made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life and you don't have a spiritual father looking out for your soul who will give an account. Maybe you did at one time, but you kind of walked away. And so today, before we close, I want to pray one last prayer. And I want to include anyone here this morning that you've never, ever made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, or you did, but you got detoured in life and you kind of left. But you know today you need to get back under the Father's care and have his heart transplanted in yours. So as I'm ready to pray this prayer this morning, if you're here and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, or you did, but you got detoured and you know you need to come back right there where you're sitting, would you slip your hand up and I'll include you in this final prayer that I'm praying. Anyone here this morning, that you just need to make Jesus the Lord of your life or you need to come back to him. Father, if there is one here this morning, for the close of this service. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that they'll rejoice for they have met someone in this building who would give them the key to the kingdom of the living God. I thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Stand up to your feet with me. Hi, this is Pastor Myers. I pray you enjoyed our broadcast today, and I wanted to let you know that our church family would love to have you join us here in our sanctuary for one of our weekly services. Every Sunday morning, we have dynamic worship, powerful preaching, an awesome children's church, and we see the power of God as he ministers to his family. Our Sunday services begin at 11 a.m. Then on Wednesday nights, we have ministries for the entire family. We have adult worship and Bible study. It's a night packed with the presence and power of God. And that happens at 715 every Wednesday night. For more information about New Life Church, you can go to our website at newlifeoutreach.org. There you'll find all the information you need to be part of our great church. And 
you'll see what God is doing in the lives of our families. Until our family meets your family on our next broadcast, may God richly bless you and yours. Who is New Life Church and what do we do? New Life Church is a multiracial, multicultural church in Millville, New Jersey. There is supernatural ministry at all our services. And today you could walk out of here with a much lighter load if God would just give you something. This morning I had, I had uh, a gift that God uh, had just given someone and I didn't know who it was supposed to go to. In fact, there's no name on it or anything. And God said, don't worry, I'll show you. And today he showed us, here's a $150 gift certificate to ShopRite so you can go buy some food. Move it over, all over. You said for years you've been in pain. Come on, let's jump, dance, let's see what you can do. You can talk to her right there, there it is. There it is, there it is, right there. Pain is going away. Just sit there because as you keep doing this, look, look what's happening there. How's the pain now? Yeah, yeah what? You mean the pain's all gone? You don't need that. You don't need me either. You were just up here in agonizing pain. You were just up here with all those problems. And now, come on, walk with me. Come on, walk with me. Come on, walk with me. Turn around. That's amazing, isn't it? You're free. Come on back here. How's it feel now? Does it feel all good? Thank God he just healed you. New Life has works around the world through our partners and outreaches. No, people want to accuse you. La gente te quiere acusar. People want to say things about La gente you. Quiere decir cosas de ti. People want to laugh at you. La gente se quiere reír de ti. And the only way you can stop them y hay una forma que tú les puedes parar, is show them the power of God in your life. Our mission outreaches reach around the world into 63 nations. From water well drilling to churches, Bible colleges, orphanages, elementary schools. New Life Church is constantly reaching around the world to share Jesus Christ. And New Life Church it there when disaster strikes. New Life staff also ministered at Ground Zero, Hurricanes Katrina, Sandy and Ima. We are helping with outreaches during the COVID pandemic. And our latest project, a leper hospital, clinic, home and church. I've been at uh, uh, New Life Church. This is our church. New Life Church is an ever-growing, ever-reaching ministry that touches the entire family. We offer activities for men, women, kids and teens. We have programs to help the needy, outreaches to the community, and ministry for every member of the family. We take mission trips, trips to Israel, and join with our ministry partners to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Church life at New Life is full of activities, outreaches, dramas, and various ministries to meet the needs of the entire family. Our concerts, dramas, shows, and special presentations reach our community with the message of hope. Thousands have come to these special presentations to be uplifted, encouraged, and hear the Word of God. New Life Church is truly a place of fellowship and family. It's a church where families flourish for all cultures, races, and backgrounds. New Life Church. The church of many colors. Why not come visit us? Perhaps even this Sunday.